the Vought V-173 Flying Pancake was a United States experimental trial aircraft constructed as part of the Vought Axe 5U initiative during World War II. Both the V-173 and the XV View showcased an unorthodox configuration consisting of a flat, somewhat disc-shaped body like a pancake flying, hence the nickname serving as the lifting surface. Two piston engines enclosed in the body-powered propellers positioned on the leading edge at the wingtips. In the 1930s, Charles Zimmerman was a distinguished aeronautical engineer who advocated the concept of discoidal aircraft, the so-called Zimmer Skimmer, and engaged in various projects independently and in collaboration with the Vought company after testing using scale models, including a remotely controlled, electrically powered large-scale model designated the Vought V-162. The US Navy approached Zimmerman and offered to finance further development. Data and concept documentation were provided to the Navy in 1939 with wind tunnel tests on full-scale models being concluded in 1940-1941. The original prototype, known as the EV-173 Flying Pancake, was constructed using wood and canvas and featured a conventional, fully symmetrical Aerofoil Section NACA 15. Designed as a proof-of-concept prototype, the initial configuration of the V-173 was built as a lightweight test model powered by 280 horsepower Continental A80 engines turning F4 Corsair propellers. These were replaced with a pair of specially modified 16 feet 6 inches three bladed units. A tall fixed main undercarriage combined with a small tailwheel provided the aircraft with a 22 degree nose high angle. The disc wing design highlighted a low aspect ratio that overcame the inherent disadvantages of induced drag created at the wingtips with the large propellers actively cancelling the drag causing tip vortices. The propellers were arranged to rotate in the opposite direction to the tip vortices, allowing the aircraft to fly with a much smaller wing area. The compact wing offered high maneuverability with greater structural strength. The empennage comprised two vertical fins with rudders, all moving stabilizers with anti-servo taps and two large elevator trim surfaces on either side of the centerline on the trailing edge of the wing platform. Zimmerman chose to incorporate the all-moving stabilizer design because he realized that the increased drag, prop wash and large wing area would make the aircraft difficult to control at low speeds. Wind tunnel tests would prove that this was a success to an extent. The aircraft would prove to require a lot of force to control at low speeds during in-flight testing, but the tail design would prove to make the aircraft controllable. In January 1942, Breit requested a proposal for two prototype aircraft of an experimental version of the V-173 known as the VS-135. The development version, the Vought XFE-1, was a larger aircraft with all-metal construction and was almost five times heavier. Although a prototype was constructed, it only performed brief hops on the runway. It never entered true controlled flight. The first flight of the V-173 was on 23 November 1942, with Vought Chief Test Pilot Boongeiten at the controls. The aircraft's most significant problem concerned its complicated gearbox that routed power from the engines to its two long propeller shafts. The gearbox produced unacceptable amounts of vibration in ground testing, delaying the aircraft's first test flight for months. This contributed to the aircraft feeling much too heavy when maneuvering for its light weight. In addition to this, on the first few flights, the pilot was never able to achieve enough speed to achieve the correct amount of airflow over the control surfaces to pull the aircraft into level flight. The test pilot Guyton discussed these issues with Zimmerman and they worked to eliminate these issues. In addition to this, Guyton commented that the cockpit design was poor. He explained that, in addition to the poor comfort, the pilot had limited to no use for the clear bottom panels of the cockpit. He explained that the pilot sat too high in the cockpit to effectively use these lower panels for takeoff or landing. 
flight testing of the V-173 went on through 1942 and 1943 with 190 flights, resulting in reports of UFOs from surprised Connecticut locals. Charles Lindbergh piloted the V-173 during this time and found it surprisingly easy to handle and exhibiting impressive low-speed capabilities. Both Lindbergh and Guyton that they were almost unable to stall the aircraft. Guyton was able to maintain the aircraft in flight regardless of how hard he pulled the stick in low-speed flight ranges at any altitude under 20,000 feet. On one occasion, the V-173 was compelled to make an emergency landing on a beach. During the pilot's final approach, he observed two bathers directly in his path. The pilot engaged the aircraft's brakes upon landing, resulting in the aircraft flipping over onto its back. Surprisingly, the airframe proved to be so robust that neither the plane nor the pilot sustained any significant damage. Despite their inability to stall the aircraft, they did find low-speed handling to be a persistent issue, largely due to the shape of the lifting body. They found that the aircraft acted as an air brake when it was pulled into a high angle of attack. This meant that the control surfaces, the horizontal stabilizers, in particular, would become very hard to operate at low speeds, such as stalls, takeoff, and landing. The developmental V-173 made its last flight on 31 March 1947. In 131.8 hours of flying over 190 flights, Zimmerman's theory of a near-vertical takeoff and landing capable fighter had been proven. This project would be improved upon, including the addition of potential armament with the Chancevort X5U. This project would improve on many of the weaknesses discovered during the testing of the V-173 prototype. Subscribe to Strategic Chronicles 